Merci. Hey, Scanotne, Hensche, Estongo, Hao, and Peter Washte, Buju, Nino Gijigud. Hello, friends and relatives. I greeted you in four different tribal languages, the first two, Seneca and Muskogee Creek, the tribes in which our mother and our father hailed from. The last two was Dakota and Anishinaabe, or Ojibwe, as an acknowledgement to the people of this land. Tonight, my brother and I are gonna perform for you two hoop dances, but before we do so, we're gonna give you a little context as the story of our journey. My brother and I were raised, born and raised in Southern California, our father passed away when we were very young, leaving our mom a very young widow. In order to keep us culturally involved and proud of our heritage, she introduced us to Pawa dancing, and we've been Pawa dancing since the time we could walk. And shortly after, we picked up the hoop dance. We've been doing Pawa dance and hoop dance for over 28 plus years now. Alongside Pawa and hoop dancing, our mother was also a Lambada, Samba, and Cha Cha instructor. Gave us a little, <laughs> give us a little sway on our hips. <laughs> but the main lesson in learning these styles was, it was learning the cultures and music of other lands. And we were able to incorporate who we were as Pawa dancers into these different styles. Additionally, our mother would take us to different ethnic festivals throughout Southern California. We would go to African festivals, Latin festivals, we would go to European festivals, and we've enjoyed the culture and the songs and dance that came from each of these different parts of the world. And as we travel throughout North America and later the world, we learned that we are all a part of the world, the hoop, the circle, and each a part of our cultures and peoples comes from a different side of that same circle, that world. And in learning so, we learned a lot of, from our friends and our colleagues that would become like friends and family to us, that we can take who we were as indigenous people into these different spaces where we could expose new audiences to indigenous traditions. And this is how we maintained who we were, but also bringing forward a new perspective of fusion. And this is how we created our hoop dance. With this hoop, our mother sought to instill within us a strong connection to our indigenous cultures, but even more so, an understanding and an appreciation of the significance and the role that it played in contributing to the greater of mankind, or earth kind. In Western teachings, in Western learning, they define a hoop as a circle, as a shape with infinite sides and infinite angles, infinity that goes on forever. And in our indigenous cultures, we very well teach the same thing. It is perpetual, it has no beginning, it has no end, but we are all undeniably a part of this circle of life. In addition to that, not only are the human beings from around the world a part of this circle, but also the birds, the bees, the trees, the creepies, the crawlies, the earth itself, the flowers, the oceans, the stars, the moon, everything you can think of in this entire galaxy is a part of your world. Now, you take this hoop and everything in it, you turn it this way. It's on a plane. Nothing is above, nothing is below, but we are all still equally important in this world and have a side, a job to maintain. In addition to that, I am only one person and I can only see the world from one perspective. So this is just a slice, a slice of the world. And until you run into another being and share their world with yours, they intersect and it's up to you how much you delve into it and understand each other. And of course, when you get to that full, complete understanding and respect, you will start to see another dimension take shape. In addition, of course, inevitably, we will run into other people, and we will continue learning, and we'll continue adding additions, perspectives to this world. Of course, if it is skewed, it's up to us. You have the power of choice. You can make it worse, you could ignore it, or you could heal it. So, we're going to present for you guys two, two stories of hoop dance. One contemporary, being that we are in a time of a lot of chaos and a seemingly unbalanced world. 
Sometimes the natural world will recognize that and start to rectify these things. And sometimes it takes us breaking back down to our most simple elements in order to create a, a sturdy foundation for the future. In addition, we will also tell a story of our traditional context with a traditional song of a creation story. Our Iroquois creation story has two brothers that create everything equal and opposite in this world. And you will see us work in tandem very well to ultimately create the world around us. So I will take a moment to get this mic off and we'll get ready to show you guys our stories of hoop dance. Thank you. 